Um, <clears throat> you know, I think the biggest thing, we, I mean, we were doing our job defensively. We had 51 points. I know it felt crazy because I don't want to get his name wrong, so we'll call him Jake. Jake was, you know, having a big half, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we just got to find ways to continue to be productive on the offense. Now we were getting, we were getting stops and then turn the ball back over. Like, you know, we can't turn over the turnover. You know what I mean? It was kind of just like, look, be stronger, be more physical, you know, find ways to, when we're in the paint, like, oh, like when we're in the paint, um, you know, be strong with the ball, you know, different things. And, you know, stop complaining about the foul calls. That was kind of my message. Was like, look, it's, I hate to be that guy, but it's April. We're not going to get the same foul call you're going to get in the beginning of the year. So uh, just those there were different things. And we came out and we executed and we did it. So big time and we got to be ready for Friday. You seemed especially demonstrative tonight. Probably had the loudest clap in the arena. Um, what was it specifically about tonight's game? Um, just the, the biggest thing for me is just continue to build my confidence back up and what I'm in my body. You know, I'm always confident on the basketball field, but understand getting to my spots and you know understand we got three games left. You know, before it's time for us to, to get going. So um, you know, it's a tough road trip for us. You know, so for me, just trying to set the tone. Um, you know, and I think the biggest thing is continuing to be able to do that and putting performances back to back together. And you know, that's my biggest thing, just setting the tone. Thank you. Nate. Was tonight a positive step for you physically? Yeah. It looked like it. Um, how did you feel? I felt better. You know, the biggest thing now is just continuing to stay at that pace and that level. Um, <clears throat> when you come in, you come out. So um, I've always said, like, it just takes time. You know, it's not. If I could fix it and just be ready, you know, right away, I would love to, you know, back three weeks ago. But, you know, I understand it takes time and just continue to trust and continue to build it. And that's the biggest thing is going out there and just understanding that, you know, give myself some grace, you know, and understanding that like, it's, it's a process to continue to get back into it. And, you know, a night like tonight is positive, but I'm always the one that's like, all right, I did it tonight, you know, and I do it on Friday, you know, and do it again and again and again. So, how close to yourself do you think you can be for playoffs? Um, I feel really good. You know, I feel like I was, you know, basically there. You know, I feel like I could have kept going in the fourth, but no need to. You know, just kind of fix myself in. Obviously, Friday is a big one and be ready for that. But that's the biggest thing: just stacking the performances on top of each other, stacking them up, and continuing to build. You know, for this push. Dara, um, off of his question, um, how how difficult has this two two and a half month stretch been for you dealing with this? trying to play through it, having to take time off, bouncing on and off the floor. Just how how <clears throat> difficult has it been for you to not be out there every night the way you want to be, but then when you are out there, you're not mm -hmm. the Donovan you expect yourself Yeah, it's, to um, <clears throat> I forgot who I said this to. It's, if I didn't have the time in Utah where I kind of went through the same situation with my ankle, um, I tore three ligaments in there, like three years ago, we played the Clippers and the Grizzlies in that series. If I didn't have that time, I think it'd be a little bit more difficult. I think now, understanding that you have to give yourself grace. I missed 39 days, missed the last remaining 19 games of the season. Um, and fortunately, there's, like I had told Chris earlier, there's nothing structurally wrong. It's not like, you know, like it's not like anything's wrong in that regard. So understanding you just have to go out there and continue to play through it. And it's tough, um, you know, when you're not out there and you're seeing yourself, you can put, put yourself in situations and seeing things. And obviously, it's, I'm not, it is tonight was different than the way I've looked and I feel like I can continue to get to my spots but it's it's a mental thing you know and just continuing to believe in, in it and continue to work at it <clears throat> but if I didn't have that situation in Utah where I had to go through it mentally and figure it out I think it'd be a lot tougher so I'm thankful for that I, we go through things in life you know for a reason you know and at that time I probably wouldn't be able to see this but understand that that's what that's what this is you know and continuing to build upon it um, and just like I, like I've been saying one percent better every day that's the biggest thing um, you guys found it in the second half uh, tonight, mm -hmm. these next two games that are left, what do you collectively need to do to kind of really find your mojo going into the playoffs so that you're going in, mm -hmm. you know, on yeah. and up kick? Well, I, I think, you know, continuing to be that team we were in the second half, getting to our spots. And we missed some open looks. We got some good looks. We opened them, but like the careless things, you know, the turnovers, um, you know, the missed blockouts. I had one to start the game. Like that, that can't happen. You know what I mean? It was a situation where George takes a floater, and I'm standing on the wing, and Jake runs, you know, down the court, and I just stand there and watch. Like, that can't happen. You know what I mean? Those are the things that, you know, you got to hold ourselves accountable and, and continue to set that tone. And, you know, this is a great test for us coming Friday. You know what I mean? Obviously, getting a win tonight was huge, but 
you know, Friday's a big one, so just continuing to set that tone and continue to build upon it. And, you know, when it's time, it's time. Joe? I don't mean to make you repeat yourself here, but um, is this a pain tolerance issue or a, a confidence in the knee that it can stand up to the, the next step? Uh, a little bit of, of both. You know, um, it's not, you know, the biggest cure for this is rest. Don't have time for that. So, I mean, it's a little bit of both, but, you know, I've consider myself a pretty mentally strong person. So just being able to find ways to adapt to the situation. I don't feel, you know, like I said, I felt really good tonight and that's all I'm really worried about, you know, and just continuing to build upon it. And it's like I said to you, there's nothing structured. I can't make it worse by playing. You know, that's what I've been told. So just continue to build upon it. And it's not my nights like tonight definitely help and just continuing to get better each day. Each day. Do you think you can get back to that place soon yes. where you can just rip the rim off? Yes. like? I mean, I, I did it in warm-ups. I mean, I know y'all aren't out there, but I was definitely up there in warm-ups. So I feel, I mean, I've been dunking this entire time with the with the thing, but I don't really do it in the game. I haven't really done it much all year, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I feel I can get there for sure. Yeah. Just along the line again, Don, when, when the playoffs come, and it could be a, uh, a five-game series, seven-game, you're playing every other night. How do you foresee that? grind working out for you. I ain't got no choice, right? <laughs> that's kind of what it is, like, you know, preparing for it and getting, getting out there. And that's the biggest thing, like I said, is going out there, taking care of your body, eating right, and then when the time comes, it's, it's time to go. Evan. Uh, I don't know if you can mask on your knee, but this mm -hmm. is the first time I believe you've played without a mask tonight. Did that make a big bit of a difference for you? <laughs> to be honest with you, I forgot it. <laughs> and then once I got so we got to start the game I was like you know what excuse me I was fuck it I was like, you know, let's just go and uh, of course I get the and one to end the first quarter I get hit in the nose and that's when I really remember though I really don't have it on but that was a part of it you know it's it's been an interesting second half of the season for me you know what I mean but you know this this you could like, put it on this you could put it on that but at the end of the day I was just like you know what let's just go out there and just play and you know I'm they don't really like it, but I'm gonna try to uh, keep it off for as long as long as I can. I understand that. And JD had talked about this. George talked about it yesterday too. Um, just kind of building those consistent habits heading into the postseason. I think Memphis, frankly, gave you guys everything they could in the first half, and you guys really just kind of flipped that switch in the third quarter. Do you think there's just a lot of positive you can build off of, especially in the second 100, half? One hundred percent. I think you can look at who the team is and be like, man, you know, terrible start, we didn't score, we didn't execute, or you can look at it as, all right, we face adversity at home, got boo, you know, and like, how do you, how do you, how do you adjust to it? How do you handle it? I think that's kind of the lessons we're at. At the end of the day, you know, they've, they've put up a good fight against a bunch of teams. They've beat some good teams of, of late. They're not a, you know, a sleeper team. They play really hard and credit to Taylor Jenkins and what he's done over there. But for us looking internally, like, <clears throat> How are we, how are we going to respond to those runs? How do we respond to a back cut that happens? You know, how do we get on each other? Like Max and Ev had a great conversation. Like, look, hold each other accountable. Hold myself accountable in the transition defense. Like that's what I'm worried about. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, um, end up being the scoring up being what it's going to be. But the habits in that regard and being able to communicate that in live action, and I feel like we did that tonight. Last one, Jimmy. You mentioned the <clears throat> the series you had or the, the playoff in ankle injury you had a few years ago. How oh, that's given you. Some confidence that this will be all right. What was that like for you the first time around when you didn't have the same fire experience? But that was <clears throat> it was interesting. You know, I think, and then on top of that, Mike got hurt too. So then I had to play the point and kind of be, you know, somewhere in that series against the Clippers. A second round, we did against, you know, Memphis. We handled business, but against the Clippers, it was kind of like a, this is a mental thing. You know, what I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to be there. You know, and this is obviously not as bad as the ankle. The ankle had three torn ligaments, so that was just time. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be there. What are you going to do about it? You know, I once you step on those lines, it doesn't matter what the hell's going on. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm going to hold myself accountable. Y'all are damn sure going to hold me, me accountable, you know what I mean, positive and negative. So um, I can sit there and, you know, whine about it, cry about it, or do something about it. And, you know, throughout the second half of the season, it's just been like just taking it step by step, you know, not – <clears throat> not tripping on the bad nights, not not getting too high on the good nights, but just continuing to get one percent better. That's really, you know, what it was for me then, and that was a lesson that, frankly, I had to learn going from being a kid to a man in that regard. And you know, that's really helped me here. How, how did you? You mentioned like you could whine about it. Were you whining about it back then? Like, what's different about how you handled uh, it then? To I mean, I think for, for for me, it was. I know my mom had me whining about it for sure. <laughs> um, I think 
you go from a why why to like okay you know this is happening for a reason you know i may not see the why right now and here we are three years later like you know what i mean so you kind of go from that and it's like a, a, a switch has to flip in your head you know what i mean and everybody has that in a different different circumstance in life you know what i mean and so at that time it really fueled me and it helped me and i had one of i mean obviously we lost but i personally had a pretty solid playoff series besides losing the, the second round you know so building upon that like okay that built a whole new level of confidence i'm like if i can do it and it taught me how to play the game differently i'm not jumping i'm not blowing by people okay how do i work them off the dribble threes how do i finish in the paint under the ring and not being able to get up there so it teaches you so many different things so you know understand that this is just another lesson that god has put in front of me and i'm not um I was as angry as I am that I wasn't out there for the past two and a half months or not myself. At the end of the day, what can I do about it? I got to go out there and put the work in, put the time in, and be ready when my number's called. What was your mom saying about it? Same thing I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact lesson she told me. All right. Okay.